God's beauty is all around us. And my goal as an artist is to capture and interpret that beauty on canvas and to take you, the viewer, along with me on this painting journey. Hello, and welcome to Painting Journeys. My name is Kitty Lynn Klisch, and I'm going to take you on a journey today. We're going to go to County Clare, Ireland. Um, I, this is uh, the second time I've been to Ireland, and um, it was uh, a lot of fun the first time, so I decided that we would go back. I'm really glad you joined me today. Um, I started on my painting yesterday and uh, in my studio in the uh, lower level of my home. And I wanted to show you, the viewer, how I go about changing things on a painting that I'm not quite satisfied with. And also I wanted to show you that um, a, a finished painting today. Uh, so I'm hoping to get this finished during my, our time together. I'm really glad you joined me. Um, once again, this is Painting Journeys, and my name is Kitty Lynn Klisch. Um, I'll show you my palette. It is pretty much just the basic, the basic colors, and um, I don't get too fancy with, don't use too many colors. Some of this muddy looking stuff down here is what I have left over from yesterday's painting. So now without further ado, let's, let's get busy here. We've got a lot to take care of. First of all, the, I notice the most that this fence right here is not as high as it should be here. This line should be a little straighter. So I'm going to take my wipeout tool and I'm going to wipe from here out going up just slightly There, and when I paint that now, that will make that fence, and that fence, by the way, is not wood. They have very little uh, wood in Ireland, and they don't make their fences with it. They make their fences with stone. So this is really, should be a stone fence, and I will be making that look more like stone for us here. Now on the top of this, it's going to be just a little bit lighter as it's coming across here. And this, this was kind of an interesting place that I happened on driving through Ireland, traveling through Ireland, I came upon so many different areas and um, the scenery varied so much. I was really surprised at that. You know, Ireland is a rather small country and so I kind of thought that the whole thing would look the same, but it doesn't. It's, uh, it's, it's, quite, it's quite different. Um, in as you travel from one region to another, like the east, uh, where Dublin would be, where we flew into, um, is completely different than the west coast. The um, in central Ireland is is quite um, quite lovely with lots of trees and and um, hills, rolling hills with the with the, um, uh, you can see the little rock um, fences that were built many, many, many years ago by the farmers, the tenant farmers. Most of the uh, farmers were um, part of uh, an estate. Land was owned by someone else and they had the tenant farmers that, that farmed the land for them. So anyway, now we're getting that to look a little more like rocks. And let's see here. 
All right, and that looks a little better because it's a little straighter. So that, that takes care of that. Um, anyway, so I was telling you, so in traveling over to Western Ireland, it was very sparse and, um, and barren looking. And you could just feel the water coming off of the Atlantic Ocean, and it was so uh, windy and and just barren and uh, land with rocks, lots and lots of rocks. And of course, the na the, um, the national I would almost say the national flower of Ireland. Uh, I mean, it's not really, but it's in a very invasive plant called gorse, and the they have it everywhere. It just has invaded Ireland, and the people would like to get rid of it, but it's, it has such a strong hold. I don't know if that's going to be possible for them. But you see the gorse now in the middle part of Ireland. Gorse is very green and lush and full of yellow flowers and quite pretty. But when you get over to the other side, the western side of, of Ireland, it's not that way at all. It's it's quite even. The gorse is very sparse and and sickly looking. Okay, so now this looks a little more like a could be a boulder fence. Then the other thing I was looking at about this painting that I wasn't too happy with was it. It looks so perfect. It looked like it needs to be messed up. I think I, th I need to go in there and actually mess things up in order to give it the, the feeling of, of reality. We don't see everything so sharply as I have it painted here. So I'm going to take a big brush and I'm going to go in here and I'm just going to um, take some strokes and just try to mess it up a little bit. Now, of course, this is always risky. It's very risky because it, you know, you, you have the chance of that you could just ruin it. I want this green to come down over here a little bit. I don't want that to be so, so um, pronounced over here. And this right in here, I want this to come down a little bit in there. I want to soften those edges. I'm, I'm just softening these edges and bringing the back with the background into over the foreground there. And that little bit of softening is going to um, knock down the sharpness of this and make it look a lot um, more natural, more painterly. That's, that's the word I'm struggling for, painterly. We want it to look painterly, not like it's a photograph. If we wanted to photograph, we have one up here that we're painting from, and we, we know we can always, you know, paint like a, a, it's a photograph, but then why would we want to bother? Okay, now, and I, th I think this is a little too wide here. I don't like the way that looks. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to just come over here and bring in what's behind this. Bring it in a little bit and lose that edge a little. We do have all the tree that's going to be coming around and over here. And that's all, believe it or not, coming from this huge tree right here. You see that? That is the tree right there. So, okay. Uh, perhaps I'll take the wipeout tool and just wipe this out here. There we go. Isn't that slick? When your paint is wet, you just wipe it out if you don't like it. And we'll bring this in a little bit over here. And, and then we have the darker blue-green in the background there 
where it's a little bit further back. And that'll look nice there. Okay. Now that's, that's much more softened, much more natural looking. I do have a little problem right in this area here. So I have to soften this edge and bring it out just a little bit so that this post that's right there is, is okay. And another thing that I noticed is that the house seems to be going up too much this way. We need to bring that down just a little bit here, right across here, and straighten that up a little bit. And we'll use some of our grade blue, a little bit of black in it. Well, actually, it's Payne's gray. I'm going to come over here. There we go. And see, I want that much softer going along there. This right here, we'll grab some light. and put in there. Now, I like that much better. That looks a whole lot better. The only problem here now is that these doors aren't straight. So we just straighten them up. And this has got a lot of, you know, it's, um, kind of a funny material. It's, it's like they've stuccoed over the rock. This place, when I came along uh, uh, upon it, I was really, I just thought it was just so pretty. Such a quaint little place. I don't really know if it was, hab you know, habited by anyone, uh, inhabited by anyone or not. It just uh, seemed to be there. It could have been um, forsaken, um, abandoned, or it might have still been someone's home. In Ireland, it's very difficult to tell if I see this is a little too wide here, so I want to narrow it up. Um, it's very hard to tell with a lot of the places that you go by if there actually is anyone that lives there or if it's been abandoned because so many of the places are really very, very old looking and they can look abandoned and yet they're not. You know, like I thought possibly this place was abandoned and then I went a little further down the, uh, the road along the fence line and there was this most gorgeous sheep. He was just a beauty. Okay, now is that looking a little more painterly? That's what I want, a more of a painterly look. Don't want everything to be jumping out at us. Yeah, I think I like that better. I think that looks much better. Mm-hmm, and I like my dimensions better. Yeah, okay, maybe we overdid it a little bit in this area. So anyway, you know, uh, the reason I mentioned that sheep is because I thought when I got to Ireland that there would be sheep everywhere. Well, I was very surprised that there's pastures absolutely full of cows. You'd think it was Wisconsin. There's tons of cows over there, of which I found very surprising because I thought they would only have sheep. And... Um, in fact, I want to show you this picture now of the of the cows and the and the uh, in the uh, pasture there. And if you'll look beyond, you'll see how the pastures are all broken up into different segments from the little rock fences. And and uh, it's just it's very it's a very beautiful, very peaceful um, scene. And then, and here is a picture of my sheep. And as I was saying, 
he was about a block, well, no, not a block, but just down uh, going to the left of the building here, um, maybe about 100, 150 feet. And he's just standing there just beautifully posing. I mean, he was like, um, he was like the star of the show. He really was a beauty and he knew it. And so I took his picture because I painted him. I wanted to paint him. Okay, I better quit piddling and diddling around here and do something constructive, Kitty. All righty. Okay, I think that looks a lot better. Uh, I hope you can see the difference there. It's, it's, it's a lot looser, and um, now I think what we'll do here is we'll put this, we'll make this fence, we'll straighten up this fence right here because it's not going in the right direction either. I don't know where my mind was yesterday when I was painting because I was really off kilter. This should be going a little bit more like this. Does it go up or down? I think it should go up. I think the camera fools the eye and makes you think that you're seeing things that you're not. There, right in there. This is kind of a dark, rocky-like area in here behind that fence there. Okay. You know, I just, I wanted you to be able to see how I go about finishing a painting. Now I see on the, on the photograph that my line on my fence is going like this. Okay. But here I have it straightened out. Now the difference here is that I have the photograph, the size of the, of the shape of the photograph does not correspond with the shape of the canvas. The canvas is actually wider. And um, so I am filling in. That's why there's so much more fence over here. Um, and I, I look at that and I think that does not look really, that looks like a photographic um, kind of a, a thing that's where it's distorted. And I just seems to me that as I was looking at the place, I was looking at it more um, frontal. And so that's why I'm going to straighten the, the, uh, the fence out. <clears throat> Okay, there we go, there. Yeah, I think that will be nice. <coughs> and I think what I'll do back here is come in with some of my dark so that you get a kind of a feel of how this is going to be when I start putting the, the leaves on the tree back here. This has got a lot of dark over it. And it even comes way out and over and on top of the roof a little bit. I'm just kind of blocking in some shapes. You don't want to paint every individual leaf. That's for sure. You know what is so interesting um, when you travel through Ireland is that the 
you'll go by a, a place like this, and then just down the road, you'll see a brand new, um, beautiful home, very modern looking, and they're all sort of mixed together. You know, it's just, it's like here, we seem so um, conscious of our neighborhood, our quote unquote neighborhood, where in Ireland, you know, they just, if they purchase the land, they build what they want to build. And if it happens to be next to a, a little, a little tiny cottage that's a couple hundred years old, that's okay, you know. Um, that, that's, I found that very interesting. It's quite a contrast. It truly is. Now, you know, yesterday when I put all this stuff behind there, I knew that I was going to do this over it. But this gives me good base on the canvas to apply the leaves and everything um, on this tree because this is a huge tree, just humongous. So I'm just going to just keep fighting along here. I want some of this really dark because without the dark, we don't we won't be able to to show the 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 light. I'm not going to bring the leaves over as far as they are here because that would be um, out of out of context. I think. I don't think that it looks okay on the can on the photograph, but I don't think it's going to look good for my painting. That's the nice thing about being an artist. You can choose, pick and choose what you want in the, um, in the composition. And that's really quite important because without being able to do that, then you have, uh, you, you don't have the control. You, you want to have the control of the brush and of what's happening as you journey across your canvas. That's very important. Okay, let's see here. Should we, maybe we'll make a couple of little tiny lines that look like little, um, well, I'm dipping into a medium here that will kind of thin my paint and make it go on a little uh, easier. These little things here. I don't usually use a medium, but today I am. Um, I, since I'm painting over wet paint, this really helps the brush move. And you can see these little uh, branches. You don't want to make them go straight, you know, or uh, curly cue. You want them to be. Um, more shaped like little pipes coming. They're jointed, branches are jointed. You don't want like branches that look like wet noodles. Hmm. Okay. I'll bring that down a little bit there. Come a little bit further. We'll bring this down over the house here just a little bit to kind of tuck that roof back. Consciously thinking, you know, you, sub you subconsciously, as an artist, you subconsciously know what you should be doing, but you have to consciously be aware of what you're doing because it's so easy just to stick that, br that brush in gear and just keep going. And before you know it, you've overdone it. All right, let's see. I'll step back, I'll take a look. Okay. Um, 
when we put some leaves in, in, on top of that, I think that'll help a lot. Now this area right here, as I'm bouncing my eye around the canvas, evaluating everything, this area kind of bothers me. Here, it's a little too, um, pronounced. I think we need to lighten that up a little bit and make it not so um, important. And I think that'll make it look a lot better. Okay, now then we'll take the little thin brush and we'll see if we can just barely make those little lines on there again with this thin down paint. Okay. thinking really hard trying to do this. Uh, I guess I didn't make it any better, did I? Well, when that happens, then you always have the option of taking a little bit of tissue in your hand and just blotting it. There we go. And you take off that extra paint and it softens it right on down. There, I think that's pretty good. Maybe we'll just do that again, just a little bit on this side right here. There. That's much, much better, not nearly so. And, I, and this door here, you see my eye is always moving, always looking at everything as I'm, as I'm working. I'm always comparing one value, uh, one shape to another, one value to another, uh, the, not so much the color as the value. This right up here is a little bit darker and it comes down there. There we go. Yeah, that now see the, how that set that back? That looks much better, right? Okay. And then I get really excited and I start talking real fast. <laughs> okay. All right, let's, let's do something with this before we go back to this. Um, let's see here. I think what I'm going to do is, I think I'm just going to kind of mass that all in with some dark. I'll use my big brush, and I'll mass it in with some darker paint. Um, that will kind of be the base, and then I'll come back over it because I don't want to paint each uh, brick, you know. I don't think I do anyway, but maybe that isn't going to work either. Let's see here. You know, see everything on the canvas is a, it's a, a, a each new painting presents a new problem to solve, and that's why oil painters, well, that's why all artists love what they do so much because it's they, they it's always that challenge of solving that problem how are we going to solve the problem what to do what to do okay this goes up and so this is golder back here a little bit golder back in there and then this is a little higher right here. I don't want the fence to be too um, um, much detail. I really want to try to get that 
you know, that block look and rock, rather, rock look that it has. Um, this is going in the other direction, right in here, and it's a little warmer. It's going like this, and I have to just kind of paint right over my my um, lines here for my gate. But that's okay, I know where they are and I'll just put them right back in there. And you notice how the brush is going in the direction that the, that the uh, stone is going? That's how you describe form. There, okay. See already, it doesn't look too bad. It just needs a little bit of more detail and, um, and it'll look just fine. So now we'll come over here and we'll try to accomplish the same thing on this side. Okay, we have a big, big one up here. And then it's a bigger one underneath it. And then it kind of comes down right in there. And it's going to go, let me see here. This is about this wide, and that is coming there. There we go. So this is coming down this way. Gotta get some dark in there, I think. It's coming down this way. Now a little bit of light. Isn't this fun? I hope you're enjoying our journey today as we're journeying, in, uh, journeying across this canvas um, depicting a quaint cottage, I would say a farm. Um, certainly not a hobby farm. <laughs> I think that this one has been around a lot longer than hobby farms. Maybe a gentleman farmer's. Do they still have those gentlemen farmers? Don't know. Okay, this seems to be going back there and something's wrong right in here. We'll have to come back with some more paint and bring this green in right here because I think it needs to be put right in there. There, I think that's a little bit brighter right there. And it's probably a little bit brighter right in here and here. Okay. This is a bright painting. I like that. I love, I love the juiciness of the colors. Okay, so now we've got a nice... Um, little top that we're going to show. And that's going to have and then we have these rocks here. And this is dark right in here where that is coming. And I'm just gonna just scumble this in for the sake of getting it on there. I'm gonna scumble it in and then I'm gonna come back and make rocks grabbing a bunch of colors, big mix, mix mash of, of, of colors. And we'll just put this in here and using our brush in a kind of a violent sort of way to describe the movement of the rock. I wanna just kinda of get that blocked in there. There we go. Mm-hmm. And there again, we're trying to keep it soft, too. We don't want it to be too, um, too realistic looking. Okay. Now we can come back and we can grab a few places 
and make a few rocks. And a lot of this will be uh, finished work that I have to do back in my studio. I can see that now. Seems like the time that I have with you is is never, never enough time to to show you everything I want to show you. Okay, we've got quite a few gray rocks here. And we've got some pink ones. You would not believe how the people in Ireland over the centuries have gone out and picked up the rocks from the fields and made these gorgeous rock fences. And it's like, um, it's like a quilt pattern. Everywhere you go, there's these little tiny, like, um, areas that are some, you know, some maybe a quarter of an acre that are outlined in rock. And, you know, you, you know that, well, that was probably where they had their garden or maybe that's where the cow or the, a couple of sheep grazed or something. But just little small, small places that, that, um, Yeah, I'm going to have to go back into that and make that a little bit better, but I just want it to be. Okay, now then, we'll come back to that if we have time. We'll come back to that area. It, at least now you can see what you have a good idea of what it's supposed to look like. Now I'm going to take a, a clean brush and we're gonna go in and find that deep rusty red that we have back here and we see that it's echoed here in the fence, in the gate rather. You see that? Here it's echoed, it's brighter here and it's brighter down in here, okay? And of course that's over there a little bit, so you see it flowing through the uh, through the painting, and that will help keep the eye in the painting because your eye is pulled to that red color. And I think this fence is mostly looks like it's pretty well rusted. I'm mixing up several different colors here to try to get something that I that I think will will work. Okay. So now I have to take the wipe out tool again and wipe out where this fence post is. See how slick that thing works? It's really awesome. And we'll widen that and widen that. that. Okay. And then over here on this side, Okay, now that is all set. Now we'll just put the center post in first. For the most part right now, I'm just trying to get the blocking in. It does seem to be a little bit redder Going to come in with a little bit redder right in here. There we go. And now this other post is narrower. 
and it's going to be right there. Oops. It looks crooked, isn't it? Oh, goodness sakes. Okay. Let's see what we can do to straighten it up here. There we go. That looks pretty good. All right. You know, I, I really appreciate you being with me today as we are painting and talking and sharing. I, um, without you, there would be no need for me. And I thank you so much for tuning in today and watching my show. Okay. Is this gonna is this gonna seal the deal here or mess it up? What do you think? Huh? I hope I'm hoping to seal the deal. I really am. I want it to be just right for you so that you can share this journey with me. See what I saw in an artistic sort of way. Something better than a photograph. Photographs are nice in their place, but there's nothing like being able to create art. The act of creating, no matter what you create, no matter if you crochet or knit, or so, whatever you do, you know, cook, whatever you do, whatever you're able to do, whatever gift God gave you, you know, rejoice in it and use it. needs a little help um, and then we have this so we have a thin black right here coming down and then we have it coming right down here too okay and then there's a brighter red above it Okay, I just got, I have a darling little camera girl here today who is working with me for the first time, Leslie. And Leslie has just let me know that I have 15 minutes left. So we still have, we still have time. We'll see what we can accomplish here. All right. Okay, now I think it needs to be made to look a little bit older. You know me, I want to mess it up now that I fixed it, I want to mess it up. All right, that looks a little better. Maybe this should be a little bit darker down here. Mm hmm There we go. And then 
this right here needs to come down. Is this the brush I was using? Yeah. Okay, we'll have this come down just a little bit more right here. And then that's going to go back. There we go. Oh, I'm liking this. Yes, we do have some areas that we have to fill in here with the yellow green from the uh, from the background. So this is what I call painting from the outside in. When you have these little spots like this, you have to very carefully just kind of come in and fill them in and keep it nice and soft and. Yeah, I was, there was, you know what? They actually have dandelions there. And that surprised me too, <laughs> that they had dandelions. But no mosquitoes. They don't have mosquitoes, but they did have dandelions. Wonder who had them first, us or them? You know what would have really been lovely? I like to paint outdoors, and it really would have been lovely to have had the time on this trip to have actually been there with you and have you see me actually working in the on-site painting. That would have really been lovely. I have to put some little dark green in there to make it look like little little things are growing or it doesn't look like things are growing. It looks too plain. There we go. Okay. All right. Now then, let me see here. Hmm. I think we need some some blue in the foreground. A little bit of blue with the green in the foreground to kind of make little things look like they're growing here. All right. I mustn't tarry too long because Leslie's going to show me a little sign here in a few minutes and it's going to tell me that I have even less time and I do want to get back to those to those leaves but I think I think you can kind of get the idea I hope you're feeling the excitement that I'm feeling over it I think it's getting getting there we'll just darken this side just a little bit to make that show up just a little bit more and a little bit on the back there we go. Yeah. All right, now we'll take, I think I'll take this brush and I'm going to put some nice, lovely, lighter colored uh, leaf formations up in here. A little bit too bright, I think. Too much yellow. Just step back and make sure that it's not getting to be too much. Right over in here too.
this is the exciting part because you have to be so careful that you don't overdo. You don't want to overdo. I do want this one to come down in front of that corner there. Okay. That certainly changed the look of it from when we began, and they, we did not have that darker green on there. Yeah, that, that is looking considerably better, I think. This really balances it out nice to have the dark in the back and the light in the foreground of the tree. And I don't want it to be too picky, so I have to come and kind of smush it. Isn't that a nice technical term, smush? We'll smush it, kitty, and that'll make it better. There we go. And I think this back here, even though it's a kind of like a dead area in the photograph, it needs to have some balance with all this vibrancy that I have going on down here. So I'm going to do it. Just going to go in here. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. And I'm just going to come back behind here and have a little bit of, of a, that tree back there be just a little bit more um, there. See, and now it gives it a nice balance. That's what we want. Yeah. And then we'll gray it a little bit as we go out a little bit. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Now I think we have a few minutes left. I'll try to show you a little bit more on this fence, what I would like to do on this um, rock wall. Um, I would probably take and try to um, define a little bit of the of the stone, a, a few little, not everywhere, just a few little marks. And the, the stones are different shapes, so. Oh, I see I didn't get this covered either. I don't want to see that yellow in there. That should be a darker blue. Well, Leslie has just told me I have five minutes left. Can you tell me where this hour has gone? I have no idea. It just seems like it has flown by for me. I hope that you has gone by pretty fast for you too. I don't want to quit. I want to stay here and paint. All right, let's see here. Okay, so I'll work on just a couple more minutes on the on these, and maybe try to get a couple of lighter colors in there, just just to give you a little better idea of what they're going to look like when they are all completed. Okay, this is this is kind of a bright yellow one right here, kind of a bright yellow rock. And there's another kind of an orangey rock over here. Now I'm not gonna pick out every one, but I will pick out some shapes to put in there. And then we have some nice blues. The blues are very pretty. Mm-hmm, there's a little bit of blue in here. And down in here. And this up here has got a little bit of blue in it, and a little bit of blue there. Okay, now you see how that's starting to look a little more. Now it's, it's not, the idea is not to make it look exactly like this. We're not gonna paint every, every 
rock as it's been stacked there, we're just going to do a suggestion, hopefully, that will be convincing uh, enough to represent a rock fence. I do want to make this a little bit darker right in here so that we can see that that is the, where the top is, the top of the fence that we're seeing there. So we would have, we would have rocks going this way. And then these here would be coming like this. Mm-hmm. And then over here, a couple. Maybe that where it goes in behind there, right in here, that should probably be a little bit darker in there because that's behind and this is sticking out. You see that? Just with a little bit of shadow, that's what we can do. Okay. It's not completely done. I had hoped to finish it for you. It's not completely done, but it's very close to being done. And you've seen me make the corrections in it that I wanted to make. And I, I do believe that it looks a lot better now than when you first start, uh, saw it today, so on uh, today's show. So I hope that you will join me next time. Um, when we journey. I'm not sure where we'll go next time. Um, maybe we'll stay in the United States and maybe we'll go to, oh, let's see, let's go to Washington State. That is a gorgeous place and you're really going to like it. Yeah, I think we'll go to Washington State and we'll, we'll look at the Pacific Ocean while we're there. We'll journey to Washington. So do join me next time. My name is Kitty Lynn Klisch. This is Painting Journeys, and this is County Clare, Ireland. Thank you so much for joining me, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye for now. Thank you.